Actually, like most of your fans, we're going to watch a saucy British 70s comedy called Confessions from a David Galaxy Affair. Let's check it out. What a title. The show starts with some sort of topless show. And here is our star, Alan Lake, as David Galaxy. He's kind of a swinging man. Believe it or not. <laughs> he may have some STDs also. He tells me he wants a bit. I don't mind a bit. So I think he's into a bit. And she gives him a bit. So anyway, Mr. Galaxy is a possible suspect in a heist that happened a few years earlier. A security call about him was robbed, sir. One of the guards was killed, and the thieves got away with £350,000. I've been assigned to reopen the inquiry. A lot of David's time was spent trying to get laid, and here was a guy hassling a meter maid. So, uh, he punched him out, but guess what? It was just a ruse to try to win her favor. And you know what? It's gonna work. Because he immediately takes her up to his flat, where things get hot and heavy. And where I can't I show you much more than this. Not a Shakespearean actor, though. I've never been very fond of the old... Anyway, he desperately needs an alibi. Oh, I I'm sorry I can't stop a little tate or tate now. I really must go. Hey, right, David, just to say... I'll handle this one, Johnson. Oh, I'm in charge. Do as little to old. Didn't they do well? Well, I'll leave you two to uh, chat among yourselves. I must be honest. Now, we want the details of your alibi, sir. Well, my alibi is quite in order. Take my word for it. <laughs> just what else have I got to make? You ever heard of Merson coming? <laughs> of course, yes. She's a living legend. The only girl in the world who's never had an orgasm, right? That's right. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. I wonder if Mr. That's Galaxy me. can give her one. Well, from all accounts, I mean, she makes the fierce de Milo look like a little poor, deprived child, right? You see, David needs reassurance. I believe that's the actress Mary Millington. The one who has not had an orgasm. Dedicated to you and the only love of your life, your prick. With my little stick of black ball rock, along the promenade I stroll. It may be sticky, but I shan't complain as long as I can have it now and again. Could you have been busy again? Yes, I shall have to find something else to. Show. He's trying to find witnesses who can corroborate his alibi. Yes, do that. There's a nice old couple with stones. I met them there once. She was very sick in hospital at the time, but. When you see them, give them my love. You forgot the new actress Diana Doors, who once graced the cover oh, of the Beatles Sgt. Pepper, Pepper album. Mr. Pringle, Madame, please do come in. Yeah. <laughs> what an absolutely underwhelming surprise this is. <laughs> There's a really nice scene in which uh, David has a couple of ladies at his Not house, either. although they seem to be more interested in with each other than they are with him. Basically ends up watching them kiss. He was having an affair with a woman the night this person was this heist occurred. But he doesn't want to tell anybody about that because she's married. Hey, Chief Inspector. The old couple. Stones. It's true. I mean, I'm under suspicion for robbery, hmm? possibly murder. Now, come on, man, you put yourself in my place. Mrs. Galaxy, I'm trying to help you, because I believe what you're saying, but you could be facing a murder rap. Yeah. Now I hear about that diary he has. She's married. And the affair he was having with the married woman. Unfair to be made public. That's why I've kept the pages blank, in case that diary gets into the wrong hands. And you saw her on June the 3rd? That's right, yeah. Um, I, I picked her up. <laughs> Here he is with Millie, his uh, big meeting with the woman who's never had an orgasm. And all these other people are listening in to see if it actually happens. You know, you're not at all how Steve described you. Really? <laughs> these are the people listening in. <laughs> I think 
Okay, it surely looks. She does get it. If you can't go against the word of an MP, and Susan Carter told me she'd back me up to the proverbial hilt. That's just the trouble, sir. She didn't. I told you not to phone her. I said, leave it to me. I said I'd seen this all before. She changed her mind. They always do if you give them time to think. Again, no alibi. My word doesn't mean a thing against this. They only didn't do it. What boiled it down to, Mr. Galaxy, is that an eyewitness will swear that you drove the getaway car. Now, if you can't provide proof that you're innocent, the law says you're guilty. Look, um, I guess I'm bloody innocent. It's a frame up. Well, it's just that if I can't get anybody to worry about me, for the 3rd of June, five bloody years ago, I could go down for 20 years, yeah. I. Well, you, you would. You'd say you were with me? You're right. A few moments' time will see the end of your sex life, David. They plan to castrate him. He's all tied up. Don't think about screen girls anymore. Oh. Well, he wakes up the next morning and finds that they didn't actually do it. <sighs> Darling, David, it's funny what people do for kicks, isn't it? Don't feel too badly, and thanks so much for your part in it. Love you, bitches. Oh, yeah. This is blackmail. So even and though they know he didn't do it, the they're going to make him plead guilt to a lesser charge. Robbery, ...who is now serving his sentence in prison, confirmed that on that day of June the 3rd, the accused, David Galaxy, was in fact the driver of the getaway car. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Chief Inspector. Two to five years in prison. He gets five years and that's our film. All right, let's talk about Confessions from the David Galaxy Affair. A long-winded title there for one of these British 70s saucy movies. Um, it came out in 1979, but this time, uh, this type of genre in the UK was kind of fading out a little bit. Um, but it had a good run in the 70s. This was near the end of it. Uh, the lead guy here, uh, what was his name? Alan Lake is David Galaxy. Um, he's a... Uh, uh, kind of a swinging guy, gets laid a lot, um, has lots of women, but there was a robbery recently, actually not too recent, like maybe a couple years prior to that, that's something he's a suspect in, uh, a robbery and it sounds like a guard or a policeman was killed in the process too. So the authorities are, are, are want to talk to him and, uh, he says, no, I didn't do anything. You know, I have alibis, this and that. So he's trying to find an alibi. They don't really seem to have any hard evidence against him either. Um, but nonetheless, he, he, he's trying to find an alibi and every time he comes up with an alibi, it doesn't turn out. Now, meanwhile, as this process is playing out, he's just sleeping around with one woman to the next. Um, there's also a subplot here where he, um, learns of this woman who has apparently slept with like over a thousand people, but she's never had an orgasm. So, uh, is he up to the challenge? And, and, and that, that woman is played by Mary Millington. And, um, eventually, you know, the, the authorities keep interviewing and talking to him. Eventually he admits that, um, he has a diary that he keeps filled with all the women that he's slept with and the dates and everything. And, uh, on this particular date in question, it's blank. So he doesn't have an alibi for that day. But then he eventually missed to the police that he's sleeping with this one woman. I think her name was Susan. Um, but uh, And she's an MP. I think that's a, a meter maid. I'm not sure. But um, and uh, but she's married. So he, he has kept her out of his diary in case somebody ever found it. Because, you know, she doesn't want the affair known for obvious reasons. So um, eventually, uh, the uh, he's not... A, he's actually finds some guy who's going to give him an alibi but the authorities by this time know that he didn't do it but the alibi doesn't checked out and somehow they get him to plead guilty to a lesser crime even though they're pretty sure he didn't do it um and he goes to jail for i think it was five years and that's kind of how our movie ends i should say prior to that though he finally did sleep with mary millington and got the big o out of her in fact their entire um liaison was uh being monitored listened to by a group of people who were all celebrating when she had the orgasm. But anyway, our film ends with him in jail uh, and uh, saying, you know, basically, I'll get you, I'll get you. And that's how the movie ends. He's in prison for five years. 
I don't know. I didn't find this movie particularly funny. Uh, I just, uh, there was not much to it, to be honest with you. It wasn't horrible. There was enough nudity throughout the movie to keep you interested, at least. Uh, Mary Millington, uh, there were some pretty risque uh, nude scenes, actually, in this movie, where you're like, is that real? Uh, I don't think it was. Um, but yeah, there were some scenes like that in this movie. Plenty of nudity, which is pretty much the only reason why you watch this kind of junk. Um... Yeah, I had a pre-recorded VHS of this from the UK. It was a PAL tape. Not sure why I had that tape. Um, never showed up on cable or anything like that. Somehow I acquired it maybe 20 years ago and watched it once then. I remembered absolutely nothing about it. Watched it again today. Nothing refreshed my memory, uh, but whatever. It's it's okay for what it is. Again, if you're watching it for the nude scenes, you're not going to be disappointed because there are plenty to keep you going um, you know, between the other scenes in this movie. So there you go. Anyway, Confessions from the David Galaxy Affair. It's available on the standalone PAL DVD here. It's also available on this Mary Millington box set, which I believe is a, a, a North American release. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'll leave the link to something down below if you're interested in it. Check it out. Leave some comments. Let me think about Confessions from the David Galaxy Affair. Watch it. Bye.